We keep hearing about Twitter bots, but what exactly are they and how on earth are they made? Here's the simplified take. How many of us would like to have our very own biggest fan? Someone who will always like our posts, will always retweet our cat photos, and most of all, support us in all the online arguments we are having with strangers. Today, I will show you just how easy it is to set up your very own retweeting bot, and I will of course share all the tricks to make it even more powerful. Now, this video is brought to you by Bright Data, an innovative web platform that collects and structures web data so that you don't have to. We will talk about them more towards the end of this video, but in the meanwhile, let's roll. So first of all, what exactly is a bot? A bot is a piece of code that mimics human behavior. It clicks on buttons, it enters text, and it interacts with websites without using a mouse or keyboard. It is all being done with code. Now, we use them for many purposes. Bots help us avoid repetitive tasks and also speed up time-consuming processes. But the problem with bots is that sometimes they are also being used to trick others. So, for example, we've all seen those dating bots pretending to be attractive young ladies, and for some reason, they really, really want to know your credit card number. Now, in addition, we have entire networks of bots pretending that certain ideas, companies, or public figures are way more popular than they actually are. I mean, look at all those followers. This company must be so reliable, but how many of those followers are actual humans? So in this tutorial, we will explore the art of bot making so that once and for all, we will know exactly how it's being used against us. Now, the bot we will make is relatively harmless. We simply quote and retweet posts with a certain keyword. However, the techniques you will learn can be easily applied on less positive causes, so please use this information responsibly. Now, every bot maker starts with something called a dummy account, which is very similar to a regular social media account, but this one cannot be associated with your name, with your email address, or any other personal details. Now, we will do this manually because we're very responsible and ethical developers, but professional bot makers, they do it automatically. And instead of creating a single account, they create hundreds or thousands of them. So on our end, we will choose a fake name, we will fill in all the account details, and we will, of course, select a very nice profile picture from some kind of a stock image website, for example, freepick.com. In addition, we will fill in some account details and we will follow a few public figures, just so it's much harder to suspect that our dummy account is actually a bot. Now, once our account is ready, we can then install the tools required to run our bot. The first tool is called a web driver, which is basically a special browser window. So instead of interacting directly with Twitter, our bot will first interact with the browser window, and then the browser window will interact with Twitter. So we have this very nice middleman in between, which basically hides our bot. Now, each browser software has its very own web driver. So in the case of Chrome, we will search for Chrome, web driver, we will click on this Chromium link, and we will choose the driver version, which matches the version of our browser. Now, if you're not sure which one is the correct one, for now, just go for the latest 109 driver, and very soon I will show you how to backtrack, in case it's needed. So let's quickly click it, and let's pick the file that suits our operating system, in my case, Windows. Next, we will extract this file inside our project folder, which is basically a directory on our computer named Twitterbot. So let's quickly drag and drop it, and beautiful. Next, we will need to install Selenium, which is a very powerful library we will use to interact with Twitter. For this, we will open our Anaconda prompt. And if you're not sure what Anaconda is, please check out my beginner's friendly tutorial, especially if you don't have any Python installed. 
Now, once we are inside Anaconda, we will activate our working environment with Conda, activate, and in my case, the name of this environment is env39. Now, once we are inside the environment, we will then install Selenium with Conda, install dash C, Conda dash forge, Selenium. We will, of course, confirm with Y, and beautiful, we have Selenium installed. Now, in the case of automating a web page, which is just fancy words for bot making, I highly recommend to use a software called Jupyter Notebook. You will see shortly why. So let's quickly install it with Conda install dash C Anaconda Jupyter. Once again, Y to confirm. And now we will open Jupyter by typing Jupyter Notebook. And there you go. Now we can access our file system. So let's quickly navigate to our project folder. There you go, Twitter bot. And we can see our web driver is already inside it. So let's create a brand new Python 3 notebook. And let's call this notebook Retweeter or any other name you'd like. Now let me quickly arrange everything on the screen just so the text is extra big. Next, let's copy the import commands from the description of this video. We will of course paste them right over here, where the first statement provides access to our web driver, and the second statement allows us to interact with elements on the web page. So the first thing we'll do here is we will initialize a web driver object with web driver, dot chrome with a capital c now in the case of using a different browser software we can replace chrome for example with firefox using their gecko driver and i'm including those links in the description as well now let's quickly assign this expression to driver and by the way the reason why we didn't specify any arguments inside those round brackets is because we've saved our web driver in the exact same folder as our notebook file if you've saved it elsewhere you will need to specify the path to your web driver as an argument to chrome hmm now once we have a web driver object we can then use it to open any url we'd like so we will type driver.get to which we will pass a URL of our choice, in my case, https twitter.com. Cool, now let's quickly run this cell with shift enter. And oh, it looks like we may have an issue here. Okay, well, look at this juicy session not created exception. So let's see what's going on here. Okay, well, it seems that our driver version of 109 doesn't match the browser version of 108, whatever, 73. Okay, well, let's go back to Chromium and let's pick the correct version, which in our case is 108, 71. Well, I guess it's as close as we can get to 73, so this should work. Let's click it. Let's get the Windows file. Alrighty, and let's replace the existing web driver with the new one. Replace. Okay, beautiful. Now let's rerun our cell once again with shift enter. And awesome. Beautiful. There you go. We are fetching Twitter's homepage. But we're not really interested in the homepage. What we're actually looking for is being blocked by my shoulder, and that's the login page. So let's quickly click it. No, not now, Twitter. And let's copy the new URL we got, which is different from Twitter.com. So let's close our web driver and let's replace the existing URL with a new one. Now we can close this annoying bar and we can rerun this cell once again with shift enter. And beautiful, much, much better. We can officially start interacting with elements on this web page. Now, the first element I'm curious about is this username input field. And since it looks like it might be the only input field on the web page, I wonder if we can use a shortcut to select it. Let's see if it works. So let's minimize this window and let's move on to a new cell. Now, folks, the rest of this tutorial assumes you have a basic knowledge of HTML. But if you don't, here's a one sentence introduction. Each element on the web page consists of tags, a tag name, as well as a set of attributes or special features related to the element. If you'd like to find out more, please check out those tutorials of mine. Links are in the description. So we will type driver.find underscore element. 
where the first argument specifies how we'd like to select our element of interest. Since in our case, we're not really looking for an input field with some special features. We are simply looking for the only input field on a page. Let's try to select it by its HTML tag name. To do so, we will type by with a capital B dot tag underscore name in all caps. Now, the second argument, as you may guess, would be the tag name itself. So we will pass a string of input. We can now assign this expression to username. And let's check that everything works as expected. We will simply fill in some text inside this username field by typing username dot send underscore keys. And we will pass our dummy account username, in my case, Lily Potter 38 and I've quickly split my screen just so you can see the automation in action. So let's go ahead and run our latest cell and boom, it worked. We are officially filling in our username with Python rather than with our keyboard. Amazing. Next, we will need to click on the next button, but since we have a bunch of buttons on this web page, we cannot really select by a tag name anymore. We will need to be a bit more specific. So let's go ahead and access the source code of this web page with a right click anywhere along the page and then inspect. Now this will open the developer tools and as you can see, it already presents us with the source code. Great. Now let's go ahead and click on this arrow button at the very top left, followed by a click on the element of interest, the next button. Now, as soon as we do that, the source code of the element will be highlighted and surprise, surprise, what we thought was a button element is actually a div element. Ha! Huh. Now, this specific element is a bit problematic to select. We have this very ambiguous class name, we have this style attribute which may change along the way, and we also have this tab index of zero, which I'm not even sure what it means. So realistically, the only attribute we can target here is the role of button. But here's another problem. If I move my head and I scroll slightly below, you can see that the forgot password button also happens to be a div with the role of button. Hmm. So why don't we try the following? So let's select all the div elements with the role of button on the web page. And then let's click on the second last element in the list. This should do the trick. So let's quickly minimize this window. Let's go back to our notebook in a new cell. And we will type driver.find underscore elements, as in many elements. Now, since selecting by tag name is not enough this time, we will try to select by something called XPath. Once again, in all caps. Now, the way to use XPath is within a string that starts with a double slash, followed by the tag name, which in our case is div. Then we open a set of square brackets and we specify the at symbol, followed by the name of the attribute, in our case, role. Then lastly, we assign it to a value of button. And there you go. So basically, a double slash indicates the tag name. The at symbol indicates an attribute or property. And then lastly, we assign it to a value of interest, and that's what we call an XPath. So let's quickly go ahead and assign it to all underscore buttons, and let's split it into several lines just so we can see everything we're doing, not just some of it. Now, since we'd like to click on one of those buttons, we will type all underscore buttons in the index of minus two, which is the second last element in the list, the next button, and we'll go ahead and call the click method on it. And let's see if it worked. So let's go ahead and run this cell. And boom, it worked. Now keep in mind that all this time I'm using the same web driver window. So yes, I'm resizing it, I'm minimizing it, but I am not closing it. Because if you do, you will need to run your entire notebook from scratch, rather than just running it cell by cell as I am demonstrating. And now it's password time. So let's quickly view the source code of the password field once again by clicking on the arrow button and then on the input itself. And we see that we are dealing with an input element with the type of password, which is perfect because we already know how to select it. So back in our code, 
we will copy all buttons and we will slightly adjust it in another cell where all buttons turns into password and then find elements turns into find a single element then instead of selecting a div with the role of button we will select an input with the type of password easy peasy then just to make sure we've selected everything correctly we will also send some text into this password field and in our case we will do this with password dot send underscore keys to which we will fill in our temporary password of my password 888 which is typical maria now let's see if it worked by running our password cell and beautiful it worked now we can officially click on this login button and we can of course pull out the developer tools and we can take a look at the source code or we can try a quick shortcut instead so let me quickly expand my notebook and let's go ahead and copy our entire all button cell we will paste it at the very bottom and instead of clicking on the second last element we will click on the last one at index minus one ha huh. Because if we take a look at this new web page, we can clearly see that the login button comes last. Hmm, we might save us lots of time. So let's see if it works. Shift enter and boom, we are officially logged in. Now, once we are logged in, we can then search for a keyword and we can, of course, do it the long way. We can select this search field. We can send a bunch of keys to it and then we can press on enter. But you can already tell I have a nice shortcut for it. So let's manually click on this search field. Let's manually type cat and let's manually press enter. Once we do so, please have a quick look at the URL. We can clearly see our keyword of cat is inside it. Beautiful. So let's just copy it. Let's go back to our notebook and inside a new cell, we will type driver.get and we will paste the URL we just copied inside it. Now, right above, we will create a new variable called keyword and we will assign it to cat. Then, instead of hard coding cat inside our URL, we will simply concatenate the variable of keyword. And boom, done. Now, to make sure it worked, let's just quickly revise cat to dog Let's give this cell a quick run. Let's have a look in our web driver and boom, we are searching for dogs instead. Perfect. Next, we will need to click on the retweet button, which is where things get a bit tricky. So let's go ahead and fetch the source code of its parent element, which basically represents the entire lower section of a tweet. Let's click it and let's expand it within our source code. Now, we will use our mouse to hover above the child elements, where the first element is a comment, not interested, and the second element is a retweet, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's quickly expand it once again, and holy smokes, we are dealing with another div element with the role of button. <sighs> Now we cannot use this attribute for selection because we will probably fetch the likes and the comments as well. So instead, let's look for something a bit more unique. And there you go, we have this data test ID of retweet. Hmm, so let's try to access it instead. So back in our code, let's go ahead and copy all buttons. We will once again adjust it a bit. So all buttons turns to retweet. Then, instead of selecting the div with the role of button, we will select the div with the data dash test ID of retweet. Now, since this line of code will fetch an entire list of elements, let's see what happens if we click on the very first element. We will type retweet in the index of zero, and we will call the click method on it. Okay, let's check. Let's run our latest cell. And beautiful, we now have those two options popping up. The first one is a simple retweet. The second one is a quote tweet. So let's go for the second option because it's a bit more challenging. Now this time, we will definitely need to look at the source code. We have no clue what those option elements might be. Okay, let's pull out the developer tools and let's quickly click on quote tweet. And oh, 
it looks like we are dealing with an anchor element with the role of menu item. Okay, let's go back to our code and quickly select it. So let's copy retweet and we will slightly adjust it. So retweet turns to quote, tweet, and then find elements turns into find element. Then instead of selecting a div element with some special features, we will select an anchor element or A with the role of menu item. Then once we select this element, we can then go ahead and click it. So let's just copy quote tweet and let's call the click method on it. And before we run this cell, please double check that your options are still open. Okay, now let's go ahead and run it. And beautiful, we are now quoting this tweet. Next, we will need to fill in some kind of a message for our quote. So let's quickly have a look at the source code. And okay, we're dealing with a div element with not too many attributes to select. Our best bet is probably selecting by class name, but the only problem with selecting by class name is that some of those class names may change as we interact with a web page. So how about if we do the following? What if we select a div with a class name that contains a string of public draft style default block, which is only one of the class names in our list of two, okay? <laughs> so let's quickly copy it. And for now, let's just paste it as a comment. Okay, now let me quickly show you how to use contains within an XPath. So we begin as usual with driver.find underscore element, and we will find this element by its XPath. Now the XPath itself also begins as usual with a double slash and then the tag name of div and then a set of square brackets. And this is where all the similarities end. So instead of specifying the attribute of or property here, we will specify contains. And we will open a set of round brackets. Now within those brow Bra, bra. round brackets, we will specify our attribute of at class. And as the second argument, we will pass the value of this attribute, which is public draft style, a default block. So the biggest difference here is that instead of assigning the attribute to its value with an equality symbol, we pass them as arguments to contains. And that's pretty much it. Now let's go ahead and give this expression a name. Let's call it quote. And then right underneath, let's fill in some text inside this quote. So quote dot send underscore keys, and we will pass a message of OMG, so funny, or any other message you'd like. Now this is just a test message, but very soon I will show you how to randomly select from a predefined list of messages. It's gonna be really, really cool. We'll do this towards the end of the tutorial. And let's see if it worked. And beautiful! Our quote was successfully entered. So the last task is to click on this tweet button and then we can go ahead and combine all our notebook cells into a single well-defined bot. So let's have a peek at the source code of this button. And surprise, surprise, it's a div element with the role of button. Okay, well, <laughs> but it also has the data test ID of tweet button which is way more specific, so let's try to select by that. So back in our notebook, we can go ahead and copy retweet, because it already deals with data test ID. That's the lazy approach, and I love it. So let's go ahead and paste it in a new cell. We will adjust retweet to tweet. We will also adjust find elements to find element, and then we will assign the value of data test ID to tweet button in camel case, and hopefully my head doesn't block it. Now, in addition, we will also click on this tweet button with tweet dot click and an empty set of round brackets. Beautiful. Okay, now let's run it. And boom, your tweet was successfully sent. Awesome. Now let's combine all the notebook cells into one, just to make sure our code works sequentially with zero issues. Now, in order for this to work, we will need to find a way of pausing the execution of our code, just so we allow enough time for all the elements to load on the page. If we don't do this, we may try to select elements that still do not exist. 
Now, one way we can do so is by using a built-in Python library called time. So let's quickly import it at the very top of our code. And then each time we are loading a new web page or a new set of elements, we will call time.sleep and we will pass the number of seconds during which the execution of our code will freeze. Now, on my end, two seconds works perfectly, but on your end, you may need to adjust it a bit. You may need to boost it or you can even randomize it. Next, we will combine all our notebook cells into one and let's quickly review the results. So first we have our imports and then we fetch Twitter's login page. Now, since we are dealing with a new URL, we will of course wait for two seconds to allow all the elements to load on the web page. Only then we will enter our username and we will click on the next button. Then we will once again wait for two seconds to allow the password input field to load. Once it is loaded, we will then send our password keys into this field and we will wait additional two seconds. Because if you remember, we are only allowed to press on the login button after our password was entered. So we need two more seconds to allow this button to unblock itself. Then we of course press on login and since we are fetching a new URL, we wait two more seconds. But that's not all. Then we will search for our keyword and we will wait two additional seconds because we have a brand new URL in the mix. Then in addition, after we click on retweet, we are presented with two options. Now we of course need to allow those options to load and therefore this additional sleep. Next, we will select one of the options and then we will deal with a new URL, so two more seconds of sleep. Now, once we enter the text of our quote, if I'm not mistaken, only then the tweet button gets unblocked. If it's not the case, I've waited for two seconds longer than I should have, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Now, after we enter our message and the tweet button gets potentially unblocked, we will then finish all this very long cell with our last line of code, which is tweet.click. And this is how it should look like on your end. Now, let's make a quick change. Let's change this message to something else. Let's say, wow. This is awesome. And another thing I want to check is going to be a bit up there. There you go. Retweet in the index of zero dot click. We are basically retweeting the very first post in our batch. Now I want to check if it works with the last post instead. So we will replace retweet in the index of zero with retweet in the index of minus one. I just want to make sure it doesn't mess up anything. And yeah, let's quickly run this cell with shift enter. Let's see if our refactoring worked. And beautiful, it worked. Good job. Now, if you've encountered any errors at this stage, please double check that you've waited in the right places and you've waited for the right amount of time. If two seconds is not enough, maybe boost it to three or four. It all depends on your hardware. Next, let's make sure we retweet more than just a single post each time we run our bot. But before we do so, let's quickly talk about Bright Data, the sponsors of this tutorial. Bright Data is a powerful web data platform that provides unique, fast, and stable solutions to collect public data at scale. With over 3,000 granted patents, Bright Data is leading the way with innovations in proxy management, web scraping, as well as analytics. With over 70 million available IPs, you get access to an enormous network of proxies. And if proxies are not enough, check out the Web Unlocker to access even the toughest of websites. Now, in addition, Bright Data provides you with a large collection of ready-to-use datasets, such as Amazon products and even Stack Overflow contributions. So with data collection taken care of, just imagine what you can do with all the time you just freed up. So check out Bright Data right now. The link is in the description. And back in our code, we can of course retweet our entire list of tweets one after the other sequentially. But that's not exactly how humans operate. How we usually do it is we retweet something, 
Then we scroll down, we skip a bunch of posts until we find another interesting post to retweet. So let's try the following. What if we fetch a batch of tweets and we only retweet the last item in the batch? Then we scroll down to the very bottom of the page where we fetch another batch of tweets. Then once again, we only retweet the last item in the batch and then we scroll down and so on and so on. Now to make it work, we will need to create a variable called n underscore scrolls, which of course represents the number of times we'd like to scroll. So at first, let's assign it to three. Then we will wrap the rest of our code inside a for loop. So for scroll in range and scrolls, we will then select the rest of our code and we will indent it with a tab. Then at the very bottom of the for loop, we will add another time dot sleep, pause of two seconds, just in case. And following this pause, we will then scroll scroll to the bottom of the page using JavaScript. Now, the way to use JavaScript is within driver.execute underscore script and a set of quotes. And before my head is going to block it, let me scroll here. Now, inside those quotes, we can then pass JavaScript commands. Now, the command we're looking for is first targeting the window object, and then we will call the scroll to method on it. Now, inside this method, we will pass two arguments. The first one represents the top of the page or zero. The second argument represents the bottom of the page or document.body.scroll height in camel case. And we'll, of course, finish this expression with a semicolon because that's how we roll with JavaScript. Now, let me show you the end of this command just so you can see it clearly. Let me scroll all the way there to make sure I have no typos. Okay, perfect. Now, since we are fetching a new batch of tweets, it makes sense to add another time.sleep right after we scroll. And beautiful. And lastly, let's make sure we post a different message each time we retweet. So we'll scroll up and right above and scrolls, we will create a new variable called messages. We will then assign it to a list full of very enthusiastic strings, such as, wow, amazing, so cute, this is awesome, and fantastic, okay? And so on and so on. Now, a good variety of messages is very important when you pretend to be human, so the more, the better. Now, in order to randomly select a message from this list, we will use a Python library named random. So at the very top of our code, we will import it with import random. And then instead of hard coding our message, let's find it first. There you go. Wow, this is awesome. Awesome. So let's dispose of it and let's replace it with a method called random.choice, to which we will pass our list of messages. Now, as you may guess, random.choice arbitrarily selects a message from our list and then it passes it to send keys. Now, let's give this a run. Hopefully, everything works. We will retweet multiple tweets with different messages. And by the way, my hands are here. I'm not touching the keyboard. It's all Python. It's not me. Okay, retweet number one, message number one. And a boom, our tweet was successfully sent. We now scroll down. We pull out, ah, huh. I can already tell that we've encountered an error. There you go, there's this 53 over here. So let's minimize our window and let's see what's going on. And congratulations, you have just encountered your very first blocker. We have an element click intercepted exception here, and it is triggered by retweet in the index of minus one dot click. Now suddenly, Selenium refuses to click on the same element we have already clicked before multiple times. And if we scroll down, we can see that other element will suddenly receive the click. What? Now, this is what we call a blocker. It is here to discourage us from retweeting multiple posts. But if you watched my previous bot making tutorials, you already know how to bypass it. So the rule of thumb is if it doesn't work with Python, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work with JavaScript. Hmm. So let's scroll up and let's find our very problematic line of code. 
Okay, I think I missed it. And there you go, retweet in the index of minus one dot click. So let's go ahead and replace it with its JavaScript alternative, which is driver dot execute underscore script to which we will pass a string containing our JavaScript command. Now, in our case, that would be arguments in the index of zero, followed by a click method. We will then, of course, finish this expression with a semicolon, where arguments in the index of zero is actually a placeholder for the Python element we'd like to click on. Now, we specify this element as a second argument of execute script. So let's go ahead and add it here. So comma. And in our case, this element is retweet in the index of minus one. Ha! Huh. Now let's see the end of this line of code. Okay, and it's just a round bracket. Cool! So let's quickly run everything and hopefully we fixed our blocker. We no longer, we are no longer facing it. Okay, tweet number one, message number one. It worked. We scroll down and it's the moment of truth. And beautiful! We have bypassed our blocker. This is tweet number two, message number two, and awesome. Now let's wait for our entire code to run, just so we know that there's no errors. And yay, it worked. Our tweeter bot is officially complete. Retweeter is alive. Now folks, a single retweeting bot is probably not gonna make much of a difference. But what if, besides retweeting, the bot also likes replies, and posts several times a day. What if, within a few months, this bot faked such a rich presence on Twitter that it attracts lots of unsuspecting followers? And most of all, if we were able to do this without a special set of skills, can you even imagine what professional hackers can do? So please, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the topic. Why on earth is it so easy? And how can a platform like Twitter prevent this type of behavior? Is it even possible, right? So let's have a public discussion and let's try to solve it together. And thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please share it with the world and don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos of this kind, you can always subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you very soon in another awesome tutorial. In the meanwhile, bye-bye.